So a couple of weeks ago, a couple of friends of mine and I got together and we watched some old, like, late 80s, early 90s, um, anime OVAs. And they <laughs> were an adventure. I thought I'd talk about them today because they're really special. <laughs> really special in their own ways. And I feel like that they just need to be talked about because I've never heard anybody talk about these. And I feel like we just need to have a discussion about them. We also found out after watching the second one that these OVAs were made by the same company, which makes it even funnier. Um, so let's get started. The first OVA we watched was 1919. 19-year-old Kubota is ready to find a girlfriend. The perfect chance arises when he meets Masuna Fujisaki, his first love in a club. She's just broken up with her longtime boyfriend and is surprised to run into Kubota, who sees the perfect opportunity has just arisen. So this entire OVA is basically about this like dorky sweet guy who's dating his first love. And he basically spent the entire time being like, are they gonna bang? Oh man, when are they gonna bang? And it's like Fujisaki's ex coming in right when they're about to like get, get down and basically is like, yo, she's trouble. And she's also probably still in love with me. So like, watch your back and then leaves. Right, but they also almost get into a fight, we can't forget that. Um, but he leaves, and basically, Kubota is basically like, I can't be with a woman who has eyes for other men. And then he like, leaves the house, dumps her, and has his virginity still intact. The so Soviet is very aesthetically pleasing to me, because it's got like, that early... 90s, like, late 80s, like, kind of, like, faded pastel color scheme, and I'm really about that. And I really, actually, I like the art style of this. Um, the music in this is really good, and it's actually, the, the music is really important in both of these OVAs. I don't know if it's just, like, if this was, like, a style of how they made these back then, but it's really good. And... It's a little weirdly placed. There's an entire section of this OVA for like five, maybe ten minutes where it's just like a music video. It's really silly and I I, I kind of liked it. Looking back, I've seen it a couple times. I actually kind of liked it, but it, it's very silly. There's also two different scenes that really made me laugh. One is very early on in the OVA where Kubota is dancing with Fujisaki in the club and they're not they're not even like closely dancing but he he like the way and it's just the way that they present it he like he just like gets a boner and it's like out of nowhere there's no reason for that to have even happened and <laughs> he's so innocent the other scene is where he becomes the first time that they almost bang when he becomes deathly, deathly afraid of the condom that she throws at him. And he's like, I don't, I don't know about this. And he just freaks out. And I just, oh, he is maybe the purest thing I've ever seen in an OVA, especially like this. Oh, God, little, little, little Kubata, just little son. <laughs> One day, if there were ever to be a sequel to this, Kubota would get his time to shine. But you know what? It wouldn't be with Fujisaki because he's got standards and he loves himself. And that's basically, that's like the entire point of this OVA, I think. You learn, you learn a little something about yourself when you watch this. Um, but that's how that goes. The other one that we watched was um, an OVA called Cypher. Two brothers are in the spotlight, one a movie star making a football movie, the other a musician who occasionally goes to school to cover for his sibling. What will this night bring them? Cyber's real weird, and I can honestly say I've never seen anything like it. I almost want to say there's like three parts to this OVA, and the beginning is just like one big music video, and it's both- okay. This entire- none of this OVA makes sense, by the way, so I'm just, this is just me trying to recollect what happened. So the two brothers, they, uh, this is set in America. I feel like we have to, pre we have to, we have to lay that out in the first place. But they 
versus New York. Maybe LA? I think not New York. Anyway. So, like, they're, like, around this town, and they meet this, like, cute girl, whatever. I think it's school. And one of the brothers, I don't know which one, I don't know. I can't tell the difference between them. One of them is dating her, and it's a music video of them dating, but also with his twin brother there. I don't understand it. The music is really good, though, and none of it makes sense. It's kind of, it's very cute and puppy. Actually, if you have seen this clip, I'm going to put it right here. Um, that's Cypher, and you should watch the entire thing because it's, it's, so, it's so special. So that's like the part that makes the most sense, I think, in this movie. The second part is kind of where things get even more confusing. So the second part of this OBA, one of the brothers gets a part in a movie, and has very poor English speaking skills despite being American. I don't understand how or why this was made this way. Why they didn't just have them speak in Japanese. That would have been fine. But the, uh, it's, oh, the phrasing, everything about it is just really interesting. I suppose I have to commend them for trying. But watching it, I think, I would have preferred just street subtitles on it, honestly. So basically, we get to see, so we get to see one of the brothers, this, that one girl, not even, like, remotely, like, relevant anymore. We don't know where she went, if she died, if they have, like, if they moved cities, whatever. So, they moved to LA, presumably, or one of, one of them does. See, this is where it gets confusing. So one of the brothers is making, like, a football movie, it's, like, fucking... Friday Night Lights, probably, something like that, and there's, like, a weird, like, behind the scenes of making the movie, and he does, like, interviews, and we see him play football, and it's also all set to music, and then his brother is kind of in it, but it doesn't, he's not, like, in, like, is he, I don't know if he's, like, his manager, and I didn't really understand when he was supposed to be in school and when he wasn't, none of us did, actually, none of us knew what was happening mostly this entire OBA, but this part in particular, we just, we didn't understand who was who, what was going on, why ever, none of it made sense. Um, but that part ends. And then things get even more confusing. Because we get transported back to New York. And it's, it's really shady looking. And it, one of the, one of them is like, strutting around town, just kind of hanging out, and having traumatic flashbacks to, like, his childhood, I think, and just, like, really dramatic, like, it gets very dramatic very quickly for no, for no reason. Just, the, it's just so jarring how it happens. He, like, you go from, like, them driving around in a sports car to this. And so the weird flashbacks end, and the brother goes home. And this is where things get really interesting. So the brother walks in. One of his, the other brother, is in the bed. And they, they, he wakes up, whatever. And then they full on mouth kiss. <laughs> in a not very brotherly way. And then the OBA basically ends after that. After they, they just like kind of make out for a second. And then they're like, you want to get breakfast? So basically this OBA ends in questionable incest question mark? And like, the entire- what gets me the most, this OVA is based on a shoujo manga. I'm pretty- I'm like 90% sure it's supposed to be about one of the twins and the girl from the beginning, and then eventually just kind of like, follows them on their shenan- their brotherly shenanigans. I don't think there's incest in the manga, um, but there is certainly- oh, mm-hmm. There we go. There's certainly some in the OBA. I still have a lot of questions about it, to be honest. I still, I still could not give you a straight answer about what this OBA is about because it's like 30 different ones. They like, what I think ended up happening was that they tried to condense the entire manga maybe, or at least a very large chunk of it. And just the, it's jarring, none, none of it makes sense 
but I still scored it very high on Hummingbird. I think the best part about both of these OVAs was the music, and I'll be honest, I would download both soundtracks of these immediately because the second OVA features like a lot of Phil Collins, which is also kind of strange, but it's really good. And I, look, if there is a Cypher and a 1919 soundtrack out there, soundtracks for both of them, for either of them, hit me up because I need, I need those in my heart. Some bops. Some bops in those. If you have any other weird OVA suggestions, I also watched, we watched, um, Mars of Destruction, which is the worst rated, um, OVA, or the worst rated, I think, anything, maybe, on, uh, my anime list, and it's bad. Maybe that'll be its own separate video one day, and, um, but I've seen that. So if you have any other suggestions, bad, good, it doesn't matter. Leave them below well in the comments, because I want to watch them and talk about them. Because weird OVAs have suddenly become my new thing, especially old ones. Because I feel like a lot of these don't age very well, and I need, I just need more of those in my life. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and all of the socials are at the end of the video. And then do blue to below, and I'll see you guys next video. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Yeah.